Welcome back everyone and in this segment we will do some examples um, that illustrate um, the use of exponential growth and decay formula and here in our example we have uh, the, the value of an investment was $2,300 in 1990 in 2015 the value was 17500 so it grew quite a bit assuming that the value of the investment grows at a rate proportional to the existing amount what is the estimated value of this investment in 2023? So first of all, here uh, the words, the investment is growing at a rate proportional to the existing amount is very important because that is the giveaway that uh, the, the function uh, that represents the growth is an exponential function. So we learned it in the previous segment, if the growth rate is proportional to the existing amount, then um, the function is going to be exponential. So we can write it like this, say y equals a constant times e to the kt. But for financial problems, usually we also have an equivalent version of that, which looks like this, a equals p times e to the rt. So, and you may be very familiar with that one from college algebra or pre-calculus, so we might as well use that one for now, but just either one can be used, okay? So, in this question, let's call 1990 as our initial point, so time equals zero. So when time equals zero, investment value was $2,300. Then in 2015, it grew to 17500 So what will be time, how many years later, from 1990 to 2015? But that's um, to subtract, so you get 25 years, right? So 25 years later, uh, it was 17,500. So that means the final amount is 17,500. Initial amount is 2,300. E to the RT, the interest rate we do not know, the growth rate, and time is 25. So from here, let's go ahead and solve for R. So the first step is going to be divide both sides by 2300. And then we're going to need to apply the natural log to both sides, right? And I'm going to try to keep everything as a exact notation, so I'm not going to round anything here. So I apply a natural log function to both sides. And ln of e to the 25r, ln of e, they're going to cancel each other. We're going to have 25r. And to get r, we need to divide both sides by 25. So now we have ln of 17,500 divided by 2,300. And all of that divided by 25, that's going to be our value for r. Now, you may, whatever you get here, you may, you know, you may want to around maybe using a lot of decimals because these are very sensitive to rounding errors since the values are going to be very small. So let me quickly enter this to my calculator. So ln of, let me go over there. So ln of Seventeen thousand five hundred divided by twenty three hundred, and close the parenthesis after that, and you want to divide it by twenty five. I put up front one over twenty five. Okay, so here we're getting a rate of point zero eight one two roughly, but if you could somehow. You know, when you use it in the next step, just refer to the answer from above. That would be very helpful. That way you can just get a very exact answer. Otherwise, I would say like use four, five, six, as many as you can. Um, the more, the better. Okay, so I would say no less than maybe five decimal points for these questions. Okay. So point zero eight one one seven two. let's say for the moment. Okay, and next... The main question is asking us not just to find a growth rate, but they want to know what is the estimated value of this investment in the year 2023. Now, if the t equals zero corresponds to 1990, 
what is the t value for 2023 so if you subtract uh, you're going to get 33 years so we want to know what is the value of this investment 33 years after the initial point so basically we need to find out the accumulated value since the initial value was 2300 and we know what R is at the moment I'm going to uh, put roughly 0.0812 but on my calculator I might put more decimals than that so that I get as accurate of an answer as possible ideally refer to the answer from above use all the decimals in, included in the previous answer but just right now to keep it short I'm putting four decimals times the time which is going to be 33 years So going back to our Desmos, twenty three hundred times e to the power of. So I want to refer to this answer from above. So point zero eight one one seven one six seven and then times 33. Oh, sorry, 33 should be on the top. Going back up there, times 33. And let's see, why is it not letting me do that? I think it wants a parenthesis. Okay, so let's go to the end and multiply it by 33. Okay, so we're getting 33,500 uh, point something, point 96, and depending on how many decimals you use, it may be a little bit different, but roughly speaking, uh, 33,500 point 96. So that's the uh, amount that we expect to get it the same pattern continues throughout um, that this investment that was worth $2,300 in 1990 that it will become 33,500 um, point something in 2023 okay let's take a look at another example so this is example four from from our notes at 9 a.m. there are 2,500 bacteria present in a certain experiment. At noon there are 10,000 bacteria present. If the rate of growth is proportional to the existing amount, determine the number of bacteria present at 3 p.m. So by now we understand uh, what the implication of this sentence is, right? If the rate of growth is proportional to the existing amount, that means the growth is exponential. So we can assume right away that the function that represents the number of bacteria at any time will be of the form of constant times e to the kt. And here, 9 a.m., that's the initial point. Let's call it t equals 0. And there were 2,500 bacteria present at that point. At noon, so three hours later, right? So three hours later, um, there were 10,000 bacteria present and we're asked to find what happens at 3 p.m. so that would be six hours after the initial point where the calculations were taken so we want to know what happens six hours later so let's begin so time equals zero is 2500 right away we know c is equal to 2500 right and then finally amount so if we just look at this segment of time in three hours it, it uh, bacteria became 10,000 in numbers. So the final amount is 10,000, and that equals the initial amount 2,500 times e to the kt. Uh, the k to growth constant we don't know yet, but the time this happened in three hours, right? Okay, so from there, this would maybe a perfect point to pause the video and come back to check your answer. So, of course, we're going to divide both sides by 2,500 first, right? So if you divide both sides by 2,500, 10,000 over 2,500, that's going to be 4 equals e to the 3k. Apply ln to both sides. ln 4 equals ln of e to the 3k. 
a line of E, they cancel each other, right? So you have the 3K remaining. Or you can also look at it this way, 3K times ln E, you can bring it down, right? That ln E is 1. So either way you look at it, you get 3K on the right-hand side and ln 4 on the left. To solve for K, divide both sides by 3. So let's see what we're getting there. ln 4 divided by 3, which is 0.462. However, again, I would highly recommend that you use I'm even going to put 0.4621. Use all the decimals or refer to the previous answer if you're able to do that on the calculator. I couldn't figure out how to do it on decimals, but on my calculator, it's easy. You just use the upper arrow key, press enter, and then it comes down to the location where it, you, know, you want it to appear in the next step of the problem. Okay, so at the moment, let me put that in there. So they want to know what happens how many bacteria are present at 3 p.m. So we want to know what happens at 6 hours after the initial point. So we're going to plug in T equals to 6. C, the initial amount was 2,500. E to the KT. K is the value from there. Again, temporarily I'm putting the four decimals, but I will use more decimals on the calculator. Um, and the unknown, in this case, is going to be Y of 6. So we also know time. Time is 6. Okay, so let's just plug this into the calculator and see what we get. 2,500 times e to the power of 0.4621, but use all the other decimals as well, times 6. When you do that, you should roughly get 40,000. Depending on how many decimals you have used, it may be slightly different, but it will be roughly 40,000 bacteria are present at that moment in time. Okay, a couple more examples about exponential growth and decay. And you may find that these next two examples um, are very typical examples you may have seen in college algebra. So again, the, the main thing that is different here is the way we have approached the formula A equals P times E to the RT, the way we have derived the formula from a simple assumption, as we've seen in the previous segment. All right, let's take a look at number one. $10,000 is invested at 7% interest compounded continuously. That basically they're giving a growth rate there as 0 0.07, or R equals 0 0.07. What is the accumulated value in 10 years? So we're going to find accumulated value in 10 years. So we're going to plug in 10 into our, uh, our function. So you can always look at this like a of t, a of t equals, it's a function of time, p times e to the rt, so right now time is 10, we're going to plug in 10 for time, and since initial investment was $10,000, p is 10,000, right, e to the r, which is 0 0.07, multiply by time, which is 10. So let's put that to our calculator and see what we're getting. 10,000 times e to the power of basically um, 0.7. When you multiply 10 times 0.07, you're going to get 0.7, right? Okay, so we're getting 20,137 and some change. So roughly speaking, um, 20,138 dollars, roughly. or 137.53 one, uh, to be more exact, okay? And depending on how the specific instructions are, you can use the rounding based on that. Um, if it's not indicated, then you can go to the nearest whole number, that's fine. Okay, when will the investment triple in value? Okay, so now we want to know, so initial investment was 10,000, when does it triple in value? So the final amount will be 30,000, right, equals the initial amount times e to the kt. We know what k, or the, in this case, interest rate r is, is 0.07, and the time is the unknown. We're going to leave it as t. So once again, to solve an exponential equation, we need to isolate it first, divide both sides by 10,000. So 30,000 over 10,000, that's going to be 3 equals e to the 0.07 times t, Apply ln to both sides, ln 3 equals ln of e to the 0.07t, 
and now you can bring the power down for the ln so it will be 0.07t times ln e but ln e is 1 that disappears so to find t just divide both sides by 0 0.07 so it's going to be ln 3 all over 0 0.07 so let's see what that is on our calculators make sure you close your parenthesis after 3 because you don't want 0 0.07 to go inside the ln function right so we're dividing it by 0 0.07 so roughly 15.69 years and so we can roughly say roughly 15.7 years and one last quick example here at what interest rate compounded continuously would fifty thousand dollars grow into five hundred thousand dollars over 35 years so this time the unknown is the interest rate right but we're going to go with the same formula and because it says compounded continuously you can assume that this formula applies and the final amount is five hundred thousand equals initial amount which is fifty thousand times e to the rt we don't know r but the time is 35 so we're going to solve this equation for r so once again, isolate the exponential by dividing both sides by 50,000. 50,000, oops, sorry, what did I do there? Sorry, this side is 500,000. So 500,000 equals 50,000 times e to the 35r. Divide both sides by 50,000. It's going to go into that 10 times e to the 35r equals 10. Apply ln to both sides, ln 10 equals ln of the right hand side, but by now we know that's going to end up being 35r because ln e will be 1 and it simplifies. And then divide both sides by 35r equals ln 10 divided by 35. And let's see what we're getting there ln of 10. Make sure you close the parenthesis divided by 35. And somewhere in the vicinity of 0 0.0 I have 658 roughly and so you can also leave it as an interest rate so we, we would multiply this by a hundred so roughly speaking 6.58 or 6 points five eight percent or you could say 6.6 percent again you could follow the given uh, decimals uh, that are required in a given problem. If it's not specified, you know, anything such as tens or hundreds would be okay for a problem like this. Okay, so that was a quick review of some of the problems from the college algebra, as well as some of the newer concepts that we've learned, uh, including understanding why exponential growth is implied when the growth rate is proportional to the existing amount.